Corrosion, according to API 651, is the deterioration of a metal that results from a reaction with its environment. Metals that are more electropositive or anodic will corrode more easily and metals that are more electronegative or cathodic are more corrosion resistant. When two dissimilar metals are in contact in the presence of an electrolyte, the electropositive metal will corrode. For corrosion to take place, there are four elements that are needed. An anode, a cathode, a metallic pad, and an electrolyte. Those you can see here. Now, what you are seeing here is a galvanic scale of metals with zinc, the most anodic metal at the top, and gold at the bottom. The electronegativity of gold is the reason why it is a precious metal, while zinc is used as a sacrificial metal. Now, something I like to say, this I heard back then in college, is that any process in nature is due to some kind of differential. In the case of corrosion, the electronegativity of metals is the driving force. And as corrosion can happen between the similar metals, it can also happen in the same metal in areas with different composition. For example, there can be differences between the base metal and the weld metal and the heat aspected sun. So that's why some weldments are more prone to corrosion than the base metal around them. With this in mind, let's check out the following animation. Here you can see an electrochemical cell. Corrosion happens only in the anode. You can see the electrons moving through the metallic path provided by the steel and the chemical reactions taking place in the electrolyte. In this case, I only show you three chemical equations, but there can be many more. Remember that this is a simple model. In the anode, iron cations are released. These cations react with hydroxide anions liberated at the cathode. They create hydrated iron. This hydrated iron in turn deposits itself over the surface of the steel and creates more corrosion processes. You see, all of this happens at a microscopic scale. But in time, these corrosion processes extend all over the underside of the button. Well, that was all for now. In subsequent videos, I will describe the basics of cathodic protection systems in relation to the API 651 recommended practice. Thank you so much for your attention.